Welcome to another episode of Patch Breakdown. Today I'm joined by the ever wonderful Peter Counterfeit Hardnell and jungle expert Harry Dr. Evans. Gentlemen. What up? <laughs> Hi, Harry. Uh, so, gentlemen, yesterday patch 9.2 dropped. It's a big one and one many has called the preseason patch. But before we dive deeper into the patch, are you guys afraid of its weight? Would you give it a thumbs up or thumbs down for making so many changes the first day of a new season? Absolute. Uh, you got a panda to your audience here, right? It's a dog company. Uh, don't know why, they... why are we doing preseason? The day ranked comes out. It's not that preseason, but there's some stuff I don't like. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but I don't know. Like, I suspect it will sell down. I just time goes by. I just I want to be like as contrary as possible, just for the sake of being contrary. So, eh, it will be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, first up, we do have uh, a new champion being released. So that's Silas. What do you guys think about him? I actually loved his uh his video, his trailer. And that was that was amazing. That's the best mm. uh, reveal they've done for champion so far. I think. I mean, the Jin one was pretty good too, but just thematically, he seems really cool. I mean, I don't know how his numbers are, but his ult definitely looks interesting. He's really weird. I like. I don't know if they how long it's gonna take them to meaningfully balance him, considering that he's so different every game, let alone like how different he is just by design. So I don't know. Like, I don't know how you possibly balance him. I've got a theory that he's gonna be really weak when he comes out, and will stay very weak because. I don't think so. Um, they've said quite a few times with the next class that they want to do a sort of overhaul of, like they did with marksmen, assassins, mages, tanks, etc. Uh, is they want to do AP bruisers, which as of right now is literally just Diana. Uh, mm. And so they want, and so Silas looks like he's going to be one of them now. And so there's probably going to be new items coming in and whatnot. And they're going to try and sort of rebalance things like Nash's tooth and Roa. And so there's a chance that Silas has sort of been made and balanced with those items in mind. And so he might never actually sort of catch up to relevance. So he, there's a slight chance that he'll be pretty weak uh, pretty uh, early on in the season. Hmm, well, you know what, Doctor? I think that's actually a very good point. One thing I'm looking forward to seeing with Silas is that how they've managed to balance him f from uh, the PBE to the actual realm. Because... I remember seeing a lot of videos on Reddit about how this guy was just completely nuts. How he could get about like 5,000 health and how he could like one shot everyone in the game. So, oh, like, those are very sure extreme circumstances. Oh, of course, yeah. But still, I've seen what like even a Night Blue play him on PB and that guy was able to smash everyone with Silas. Well, what I'm really looking forward to, him, uh, forward to with him is some of the specific alt interactions and i'm not talking about like the mm. weird ones you know things like oh niggly ult and stuff like that like, <laughs> how does shivana ult work things like caitlin ult because mm. he has this uh you know he changes the scalings on ultimate abilities if they have an ad scaling because he's an ap champion you know, he will convert that ap that, sorry that ad ratio into ap and for most cases this is pretty balanced but there are a few champions that have pretty decent scaling on their ultimate abilities like Caitlyn and Lucian but because they're not designed to build full AD because building absolutely nothing but AD is suboptimal for them the ratios are really high mm. uh, just, just to sort of still give you a little bit of something just because all you're really building is you know Infinity Edge or Black Cleaver whatever it is so step one play Lethality Caitlyn it's all you get is the ult but it's, it's funny <laughs> and so I think that when you play uh, Silas now mm -hmm. he's going to have just Hundred to zero on things like a Caitlyn or a Lucian or just—it's mostly ADCs. It should yeah. be pretty interesting. I think, based on that, then they may well end up just doing specific ultimate balancing on him. If there turns out to be certain ultimates that are really, really disgusting on him, I think that's so hard to do, though, right? That's the, if you start have to get into the very, very like nitty gritty of it, and then suddenly it's like, okay, I'm a Silas main. What are my ratios? And you have to just like open up a spreadsheet and just like find what you're against and everything like mm. i think i feel like you you put yourself up for that position though when you have a champion who has over a hundred different ultimates well i think it's going to open up for a lot more spaghetti from riot's side if you have to go in and like adjust every single ultimate between 
every single champion that Silas can interact with. Yeah, I mean, they haven't done it for Zoe, right? So, I'm not sure why they did it for Silas. Yeah, well, that's fair. Anyways, guys, let's jump on to Aatrox. So, he is the first real champion getting either buffed or nerfed here in this patch. And for Aatrox, he is getting nerfed in terms of his Q and his E time has been increased. So, that is also getting nerfed. Um, for Aatrox, I think I think one thing that I like about this is that we are upping the recharge time of the Umbral Dash, meaning that okay. he has to use it smarter, both as a combo with Dark and Blade, uh, but also for the bonus AD the Umbral Dash uh, gives him. Uh, one thing, however, I I would like to see being changed on Aatrox is his health in the early game, because in my head, Aatrox is a fighter and not a bruiser. And I think a fighter shouldn't have as much health as a bruiser. If you look at Urgot, who in my head is a bruiser, he has the same amount of health as Aatrox in the early game, which is 580. And I think Aatrox should probably have around, what, like 540, if not even 500. Simply because I think he has too much health, which makes him too tanky somewhat in the early game. Yeah, especially when he's already healing so much as well. I mean... I think this is a, this is a nice, uh, nice enough change. I don't know how impactful it's going to be. The dash is definitely, I think, the cooldown is a little on the short side uh, in the later stages of the game. So hopefully okay. this will sort of fix that a little bit. Uh, I'm just still mad that they nerfed the uh, Aatrox jungle, just hmm. because because smite mid was a problem. But Aatrox jungle was a decent pick. It was okay. It was it was fine. And then they just nerfed it for no reason. Since then, they've just have well, not. They, yeah. Well, they didn't. I mean, I wouldn't say that's fair. That's no reason. But like, yeah, well, it was they nerfed it, yeah, because Smite Aatrox made definitely a problem, right? Mm -hmm. But we that was a problem that. that could have been fixed by just fixing the bounty. No, the bounty. What's it called? Uh, Monster Hunter earlier. Yeah, they mm -hmm. did come up that problem from multiple different angles, which did mean that yeah, there was some stuff which was done. He got caught a little. Yeah. Uh, it's worth noting for the Dark and Blade change as well. It's a it's a total AD ratio. Yeah. And so I was able to glance a little bit of Freak's video and he was saying it's about a 10% damage nerf at level 1. Cool. So I guess, you know, that's obviously the numbers are much smaller at level 1, but I think it's still going to be noticeable. Well, that definitely should be the case, and that's what they're aiming for to try and uh, make him weaker in the early game because that's where he is so good right now. Because. Like, I think for Aatrox, he should be an early game to mid game monster. Uh, but just compared with his health and his damage, he is good all around and is still a monster in the late game, too. But yeah, do you guys have more to add to Aatrox? No, I think so. I think so. No. Hey, hey, well, uh, Aurelian Solden. Uh, his Q recast time has been reduced and his stun duration sh is shorter if recast quickly. And it's now longer for big stars. Big fan. Yeah, I like this change as well because it now gives him a bigger incentive to roam from lane to try and find people out of position. Or even just... Aurelian so never wanted to roam before. <laughs> well, he, he, he did. He did, but it's just a bigger yeah. incentive now. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a really nice change. Aurelian so is, I think, definitely up there on champions that need a rework. Mm. Even, though, even though he's so new, just because his trade patterns his fighting is just really not very interactive right it's just it's just the passive and so anything that gives him an element of sort of skill expression outplay is really nice he definitely needs the the first part of this the um faster reactivation on the star surge that's really nice for things like uh, aurelia and whatnot and before there was no reason to actually scale up the stun right and there's no reason to go for those sort of huge size of the lane star surges but mm -hmm. now you are actually maybe not for getting that big there's not really a benefit but there is still some merit and some reason to actually try and build it up i would say that the uh it's worth noting that yeah it's a it's a huge to be able to stun at melee range but the stuns in normal kind of activation range are actually going to be shorter from what i can see much here. much shorter uh like it used to be 1.1 at level one, and now it's dot uh, fifty-five. If you so just yeah. if you it's just go low. immediately with it. Yeah. So as I say, it reaches the old duration when it hits to hits uh, stars. Um, so, but yeah, the outer limit is just his normal passive, right? It's not his W. Uh, I 
I think um, Outer Limit is just his normal um, passive range. And so I think that's when it hits the uh, sort of break even point right now. Uh, well, I think the Outer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, should be. Then I'm. I, 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 think, I think you're probably right, Doctor. Around, yeah, yeah, uh, right. around the star slash his auto attacks. Yes. Something like that. Yeah, well, uh, so yeah, well, we're both, well, all big fans of that change. Now, Brand has also gotten changed. Passive damage has, over time, has been decreased. Uh, but also the recommended items have been updated. Oh, wow! <laughs> Thanks for being thorough on that one. You're welcome. Oh, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> saved. I, I mean, so I guess it is kind of, you know, sizable, but... You think of full rotation, you're now losing 3% of someone's max health damage. It's pretty decent, but at the same time, his passive passive damage over time is not the problem with Brand. The problem is how cheap his W is, uh, alongside how long range it is. Because you can just... I, I don't know if you've ever tried playing this, but you just not be too the lane, walk up, just throw down as many Ws as one. If you've got Mana Flow Band and the mm. um, Beast Edge, you just do not care. There is nothing stopping you from just spamming out your W and it just makes for a very sort of oppressive lane and so I feel like this isn't the fix that he needed no I don't think so either like I'm, I'm, there are going to be the case for excuse me several of the champions in this where it's like a very mild nerf where it mm -hmm. doesn't fundamentally change anything it just means they're slightly okay. less bad but yeah I don't slightly, know. I slightly think... weaker slightly stronger yeah, it's. I know that's definitely the school of thought with like patching where you kind of like you inch things around the place to try and make sure you don't overshoot. But I don't see that really being possible with Bran considering how strong he is in the bottom lane. Yeah, I think it makes him less punishing, however, because as uh, Doctor said, it's easy to land a W, and now even if you are hit by the W, you don't don't take as much damage over time. So like it's less punishing, but it's I, I agree with doctors in saying that it's definitely not like the problem with him. Yeah, I mean, what it is it's it's three percent health, realistically. Because if you hit your W, you're probably going to hit your stun, which is probably going to hit your E as well. Mm -hmm. And so that is more this more than it looks like, right? But and then maybe that will be enough that it's less punishing, like you said. Yeah. Well, uh, moving on to Casio Pia. Or Pia, depending on how you want to say that. Her W cooldown has been increased late and damage has been decreased late. So, uh, I looked at OPGG for how you usually max your skills on Cassiopeia. And 68.66% of the times, you double you, or you uh, max your Miasma as your second. Uh, yes. And I think the, the thoughts behind this change is that, right, they want you to go Q and E as your main abilities on Caspia. After all, uh, you have the dot and then you have like the shot, uh, the machine gun E, right? Yeah, so, that's the two bills, isn't that? Yeah, right. So that's like the damage tools, whereas my asthma should only be a crowd control tool, right? So I yeah. think that's their thoughts behind this, that they want to try and shoot people towards top, uh, maxing the E as their second ability. Oh, oh yeah. that's. I think that's pretty direct there. Like the... Uh, from what Freak was saying, the you know, you look at the numbers at top level, you're losing like 25% damage on it, which is pretty crazy. And that's so, nice. yeah. I mean, I kind of feel like the notes explain themselves almost, yeah. But also, considering that she has been seeing a lot of time down in the bottom lane, having that miasma and just uh, upping or or uh, maxing that as your second means that you can punish those AD carries a lot more harder because they don't have as much mobility so now shooting her not necessarily away from the bottom lane but at least shooting her more towards being that late game monster once again with that e max uh as your second does make sense yeah they used to max the e first on some of the builds with uh you know you go like tier and whatnot yeah mm. now you now you go q w e yeah i didn't really have a problem with the sort of poison builds but i you know, I thought it was an interesting way to play it. You know, you get a little bit more burst instead of the DPS that Twin Fangs gives. But I do sort of understand what Riot is saying and that you see that they want you to rely more on having to actually sort of stay in a fight and be a constant source instead of just hit a Q, 
and then throw out a W and it's like, oh, the Q's going to put someone to half health, the W's going to kill them if they try to walk towards you, you know, so. Yeah. I, I don't think that uh, no, Noxious Blast is a problem at all. Uh, I just, I agree with you, Doctor, when you say that it should be about you having to stay in a fight. At least, Kashupia is not someone who should just lay down her Q and then walk away and get a kill. It should be about yeah. her actually coming in and chunking down one person at a time. It's worth noting as well that the yeah the level one remains exactly the same. Yeah. As it did before. Yeah, which is, well, that'll be fine if you're maxing it last. You won't notice anything. It's just the people that max it first. Yeah, I imagine the seconds. the AP the amount of AP you'll have for the, if you max it last will like be a significant enough part of the damage you won't really notice. Mm-hmm. Wait, well, moving on to Galio, Q damage has been decreased, cost increased, and E damage decreased early. Hooray! I need a, I need a Vuvuzela. Uh, what? Yeah. You, uh, need you a... know Vuvuzela? The, the things from the football that people do and they make the loud celebratory noises. Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, sorry, I don't do the, traditional sports. Uh, Peter, did you, did you watch, uh, what's it like, uh, the World Cup in South Africa? No. Okay, Pete, well, you were like, as old as I am now, when that was on, because I was like three when that was a thing. I remember. Wait. Wait, oh, it was geez. back in two thousand and ten, right? That's close enough. All right. <laughs> no, that <laughs> makes that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, Harry. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, that was the thing, and everyone had those, and then they got like banned or something. But yeah, they get, anyway. I just I wanted to celebrate is what I was getting at. This mm -hmm. champion is disgusting. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna be shedding a tear for having less oh. obnoxious Galia. Yeah. Tank Galio players are now very sad because well, he's just turbo scuffed. But... I wouldn't say that's true. He's been pushed back more towards being a tank because of his AP ratios getting hit. Like his base damage is still pretty reasonable. It's just not going to be as rewarding but they, to scale off with AP. Well, they lowered his. Uh, actually, they lowered his reliability as a tank. Yeah, I think there are some hits to his damage reduction on his W. I think, and um, then also things about you yeah, know, that the was his punch and whatnot. Old, but now they also. Yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. But now they've also nerfed the damage part and the AP's getting. So it's, if you played AP Galio, you're going to be upset, as you should be, because it's not a match. Mm. Um, but if you were a tank Galio player, if you really like the theme of you know being that anti-mage, bruiser, hero dude, uh, I feel like you're now starting to feel a little bit sort of, eh, you know what's going on here. But... Right, we'll probably fix it later on. It's just, it's definitely. I feel like this is a bit of a temporary. This is not the last time that Galio will be seen in the patch notes. But no, I think you're right that if if he's if he sucks as a tank as well as a former AP champion, nothing. I'll just buff him up again in that regard. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But it's just they. I think they have to be um, wary of how much they nerf his Q because if you shove him out of the mid lane, I don't think he's going to see any play at all because he's not very effective in the top side. Well, like you, yeah, you're not going to fight against the Urgot and the Aatrox, and you can't really use your old in the top side. I don't think it's too hard to sort of shift him back towards being a tank. The problem is you don't want him to be too good because then he takes over pro, obviously, as is the issue they had. But if you want to make him slightly better in like top lane, you just increase the percent max health damage on the Q, but then also increase the cost because when you see the people playing in mid right now and mages, um, they sort of just skip over a mana item. You know, you go Prophet Belt and uh, Jewel Pen. Mm -hmm. But if you're playing him top, you're going to need a, a little bit more mana, but that's, that's going to be fine because you get either a mask or a rod. And so if you're scared that people are going to take rod just by a mid, you can then tweak, you can tweak with the ratios elsewhere. And I think the mana cost on his Q is just as well as the 0.9 ratio. Mm -hmm. were, what we're really sort of keeping him uh, that powerhouse in the mid lane. And so I think it's not too hard because Catalyst exists to make him a, a feasible top laner again. Mm, yeah. Uh, Peter, you have anything to add? Uh, just worth noting the Justice Punch uh, damage going down as well. Uh, like, yeah, there was some question. I know there was some question last patch as to whether or not his. Because some of the numbers were a little bit confusing. As to what his wave clear was like, and well, just his punch is gonna be part of that. So yeah, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be devastated to see him bunted back up to top lane, or at least not be mm -hmm. a burst, effectively a burst mage in the mid lane, which just feels bizarre yeah. as a piece of the his identity. 
Mm -hmm. Well, moving on to Irelia then, the second big mid laner here in this patch. So guys, or let me ask uh, Doctor, I know you're a jungle main. What do you feel yes. about having to face an Irelia in the mid lane when you are ganking? Good God. I CC her, she just W's it, stuns me <laughs> and walks away. It's like I said, oh, I'll hit you with my skill shot. Oh, you just dashed 10 trillion Wait, times. Wait, Doctor, you hit skill shots? Well, not versus Irelia. <laughs> <laughs> gonna bait him out yeah it's an interesting one i mean i don't it's the thing about this is they've removed the disarm and they've removed the shield breaking passive right mm -hmm. and i thought those were actually two quite interesting things definitely overloaded on aurelia mm -hmm. i don't mind the disarm part of the ult if they'd like knocked other stuff off but i see why a lot of people it's quite frustrating to play against mm. so, definitely things that could come back into the game somewhere else but i also don't know if they are the problem for Aurelia, she's still a little bit overloaded, but what I think would have been the good one was just slow down her Q travel speed. I mean, that's a, a, mm -hmm. a lot of people would call called for. Just because right now she just sits all over the place and it's so hard to actually trade back with her. Or, or you know, if you're getting a land of skill shot or whatever. Yeah. They lower the duration, increase the slow, so there's still a penalty for hitting the wall, and they actually increase the damage on it as well. Just getting rid of that extra disarm means that you're a little little less screwed if you're playing uh, you know an adc and you're caught out in the side lane or something mm. you can I'm actually a, run i'm a big fan of them shifting a lot of her damage onto her ult because now it means that once you hit level six she's going to be well more of a monster than she is from one to five like she's still super strong obviously but now it just means that her level six spike is where you should really be focusing on trying to get her to snowball I think the 90% slow as well is pretty crazy. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, if people be talking about that, it's effectively a stun in terms well, of your ability to get away from her. Uh, the problem, the, the, the thing is that it's a team fight thing, it's very nice, but actually in the 1v1, it doesn't, it could be a stun, it could be a 1% slow, it could be a 90% slow. It doesn't matter because she gets the mark on you anyway. Mm. So you're still not escaping because if you walk through the wall, <laughs> getting the, the jump on you. She's getting the extra blade surge. Yeah. So in that regard, it's kind of just like, eh, you know, whatever. But it is nice to get a little bit more damage. Just make it... Because right now, it, it is a Markiplier. That's all it does. Uh, it just gives you extra cues. So to Markiplier? Give it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> to give it a little bit more utility, I think it's fun. It's, I kind of want to highlight as well the blade surge change. Like, it kind of became a thing that later on, that if you fought anywhere near minions she would always just have you know that many dashes i don't know maybe one of you guys has a better idea if that's still a thing going to stop that yeah i assume it's going to be harder but i don't know if that's how that is in the real world in terms of if there's a few levels where she won't be able to do that and then she goes back to be able to or something well i think we have to test it out first of all but i yeah i think their idea is that with the flat bonus it is going to make it harder for her to just be that uh play dancer all, all over the map i assume she max she maxes Q, uh q at level one uh sorry at first i'd assume yeah i'm pretty sure so yes yeah, so it's going to drop off post level nine in terms of the amount of damage she's doing to minions so i guess late game then she would have to actually set up minions to be jumped to rather than just killing them all instantly yeah. Well, yeah, they they also wanted to just hit on her late game uh, wave clearing as well. So now, Peter, that is obviously one of the things that they wanted to hit on with that change from double damage to flat bonus. Well, that might mean that she just has to start building tier mat again, uh, which you know recently got nerfed, and then a lot of people, including Aurelia, sort of started to stop building it. And I think the Aurelias were like, well, we don't actually need it. You know, it's nice, but we can still one hit the creeps one at a time. Mm -hmm. So maybe now Aurelia's just go back to building that Titanic Hydra again. Uh, not yeah. too much changes other than they lose an item slot and spend a little bit more on that team early on, which I guess is fine. Yeah. So, uh, Jarvan, next up. Jarvan the fourth. E attack speed has been increased. Uh, yeah. Doctor, as our jungle expert. It's it's nice. I think Jarvan's in a decent spot. If anyone was watching Twitch Rivals, um, Skara was playing a lot of Jarvan and doing pretty well with it. He's okay, but because he doesn't beat... Uh, anyone in a level 2 1v1 that means he's an absolutely terrible champion but the 10% um, bonus to his attack speed level 1 is definitely nice because this is, he has the passive bonus and then he's also going to get it when he drops the flag as well so you're increasing your uh, clear speed uh, pretty nicely there 
building a little bit better. Your first, you know, your first buff, obviously, you're now getting five percent. Say you start on, you know, blue side red buff, you're now getting a uh, basically an extra twenty percent attack speed across the uh, the three of you between Java and the ADC and the support. So that's pretty decent. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's not too much to say, but it's a nice buff to Java players. Mm. I would consider it as it. Um, Ellis was talking about that the. the You've also got to consider this in a world where Galio is suddenly a lot worse in terms mm. of how, how viable he is as part of a team composition. Yeah, I mean, Galio's a big part of why people play Java because you just bring him in. But I think even without this, the uh, follow-up, mm. he's still okay. I mean, you could argue why not just play Camille because Camille's just a, a better version of Javan right now. Although she is getting some nerfs next patch. Uh, so I thought we're going to come this patch, but they're not. But uh, she might... Be a dead champion on the next one, but for Javan right now, yeah, it's all right. Would I still pick him? Probably not. But if I was a Javan one trick, I'd be happy. <laughs> all right, well... I, feel, I feel like you say that about any champion on the faction notes. It's like, yeah, if I was their one trick, yeah, <laughs> if they're getting buffed, sure. You know? <laughs> don't don't point out, otherwise you won't be able to use it. Oh, yeah. I'll just cool. say that for everything. <laughs> Well, well, well. So, uh, Jax, attack damage has been decreased and Q damage decreased early. Uh, well, that's a Jax one trick. I'm, I'm definitely not a fan of nerfing him. Uh, I'm not a one trick, <laughs> first up. Uh, but I'm not a fan of nerfing him because I think with the Hail really? Blades... Well, I, I, haven't, I don't think that he's been too strong. And I think that even with Hail right. Blades coming in, he didn't move in pick rate nor in win rate. I don't, think, I don't think he was... Like uh -oh, Harry's gearing up for a fight. I've had this 20 times now. Okay. Neither of these things are the problem with Jax. The problem with Jax is combination of Conqueror and mm. uh, Essence Reaver. Essence Reaver giving him almost permanent uptime on his E and insane mobility in teamfights. Conqueror meaning he now has three sources of damage. There's no way you can possibly itemize against it. Top lane Jax. However, Jungle Jax takes Hail of Blades because Conqueror is a terrible ruin of a jungle because you can't ever proc it. Hail of Blades, really strong on Jungle Jax. Riot have said that they find that Jack's jungle dominates bronze, but is you know he's bronze. okay. Yeah, he's really and good in low elo, but he's yeah. kind of like he's still good, but he's not OP mm -hmm. in higher elos. Uh, and the reverse is true for top lane. He just hard ints in lower elos, but one v nines games. But I think the amount that he one v nines top lane in high elo is a lot higher than how he does in sort of low elos. And I'm not sure why they haven't touched Essence Reaver on this patch or anything like that. Probably because they're doing it on the next one. But this is just enough to jungle Jax because your clear speed gets bopped a lot. And now you're not even 100% certain if you want to take Q level 2, which does uh, limit your ability to do crab uh, or maybe even level 2 gank, which isn't terrible on Jax if you're now taking the uh, W level 2 instead of leap strike. That 15 damage does actually make quite a difference when you're talking about the only reason you would take Q for clearing is because it was about, you know, 30 extra damage. Mm. Now it's not. I don't know. It just... Now anyone playing top is going to have slightly better trades versus Jax, you know, is missing out on, you know, maybe 30 damage per trade because of the base AD nerf as well. And um, anyone, you know, playing Jax jungle is going to have a slightly, close, a slightly slower clear speed. It doesn't fix his late game problems, but it does uh, definitely make him weaker early on. Well, as well, this has got to be considered... Uh, in the context of the later jungle changes as well, hmm. which is going to hit farming junglers pretty darn hard. So, I, yeah, I would imagine that's a couple of different reasons to not favor him anywhere near as much in the jungle. Yeah, I don't know if, if this if this change is going to affect his power farming that much. It just sort of affects him on those very earliest uh, clear stages. I definitely think he's still uh, going to be good in higher elo jungle play. But I don't know if he's he's probably no he's probably still going to be blind pickable because right now you can blind pick him but he's he works best as a counter to particularly Zinzao right Zinzao and Camille mm -hmm. and Jax does really well into which is part of the reason why he sees so much play he's really good versus those level two gankers and those auto attack based champions and I think he's still going to be a, a playable jungler even when you're not versus those with these nerfs just slightly worse clearing which is you know probably understandable. Well, I mean, this is what we we're talking about right from back earlier on, was that if it's just numbers, then it's just going to be a matter of degree. 
rather than a fundamental change. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Cassidy, his armor has been decreased. Hooray! God, thank, thank the Lord. At least we don't need three decimal points for his base armor anymore. Yeah, that's an interesting one. <laughs> just cast casting players all around the world uh, crying out over losing that point three seven six base armor. <laughs> I think it's more armor is is quite a lot. Speaking as a former kindred one trick, losing base armor is enough to make mm. champion unplayable for two years. It was, it was a sad time to say the least. I think freak works out as being around about a five percent damage. Increase from physical damage well, versus like... casting, and he already uh, has casting him. But yeah, which means forecasting. As in, he's going to be taking five percent more. Yeah, yeah. From, from, from so. AD yeah, yeah, dealers, yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 So he really has is... a bad time versus you know said Talon Lucian. So yeah. So it's now just, just gonna. gonna... Yeah, it's which is fine. Well, I guess it makes it reduces his blind pick ability quite a lot. Absolutely. You should never. Cause... Okay, so he's anti mage, right? Like mm. Galio's meant to be, which means you should just never blind pick him. You should only ever pick him versus things that he's good into. And so by getting rid of space armor, which also hurts his sort of trades because you're taking more minion damage as well. Mm. That is, yeah, like you said, reducing his blind pick ability. Because and anything you can do more... to stop cast and hitting level 16 is vital. I would note as well, as much as it's maybe really obvious, but like that's also, you know, your ranged mage opponents also have auto attacks that do. Physical damage. Yeah, true, yeah. So, you know, those, the fact that he's married is going to matter more. Yeah, those, those little trades are really going to add up. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't yes, have anything but... to add to Kasdan, really. Uh, I think you guys covered it all, more or less. Yes, uh, but please could you cue the crab rave music for this next one? <laughs> <laughs> This is the best patch. This is the best oh, patch of the year coming up. Right all, all right, Dark Dad, tell me why is these changes good? You As have you have twenty trick. seconds. Oh my god, I don't have twenty seconds to explain this. Okay, to understand how Kane is getting buffed, you have to understand how he already works. Before there was two bars, one for melee, one for range. You couldn't see. Which... Oh, good god! <laughs> you couldn't see which one you had. It was just kind of a coin flip. I mean. You could keep track of it mentally, but because also the value of an orb would increase over game time, you were scuffed. Now, you actually know which one it is, you can ping it, you can actually stack the second one after finishing the first one. It's a, it's a good time. Oh, and if they're really close, you actually have a decider in it because it's the last person that you hit. Whereas before, if they're really close, it's the first person you hit, and then you probably end up getting the wrong one. The, like... I would say just to provide a little bit more context for this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it... <laughs> no, no, oh, my Peter, you have five seconds. <laughs> oh, I seemed I had like fifty minutes. I was just talking about it for a long time, just to frustrate Doctor. Uh, I do think the the basic idea about which were, was initially behind his passive was of the whole thing of. And Free was talking about this, saying that they intentionally obfuscated. Yeah, his passive in order yeah, to try true. and encourage you not to do certain things, which you yeah. know. So you get us, yeah, as you're saying, you get a certain amount for like a certain amount for range. I just think that's terrible design. Yep, and that was Daniel Z. Klein at some of his finest. Who well, it's was like intentionally <laughs> making it hard to understand what's going on. Yeah, well, it's like if you've, I feel like you're punishing the player for your design mistake. Yeah, because it's like you know why not just have it work in a way which doesn't encourage that behavior but then punish the player for the fact that you've encouraged that behavior Pete, you're saying what 6.999999 billion people in the planet are saying however the original designer of Kane had a different opinion he uh, had quite a lot of opinions though which yeah, he had a lot of opinions but it's no longer with Riot which means Kane is now playable now he's been playable for a while but this is just a really nice really 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 nice change uh, and that's just the passive parts the rest are still decent yeah yeah, so a bit of a quality of life, one could say. Yeah, you can ping it, you can um, control it a little bit more, and you can still... The, probably the big one is if you get the wrong form, you can still stack the other one uh, and speed it up, which is real nice. And then the other two is you can recall uh, whilst you're in your E, which is you know nice because it's just sort of boring to sit around for two seconds. It's like, come on, hurry up. And then the extra range on... Oh, Shadow Assassin Kane is... He has the highest, the fastest burst combo in the game. Um, really? Yeah. But 
he's still weak. So anything that can make him stronger is fine. If yeah, you have but... any assassin one v one, any two assassins, Kane wins every time. There was um, there was also a bug. Hmm. That yeah, the, also... what, the the Yi one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the well, the Q not doing any damage, which people were talking about and try, trying to figure out if they were crazy or not. And now that's fixed. So yeah, I hadn't heard I don't know. about that one before today. But... Oh, before you know these patches. I heard about the the Master Yi one, which was just a really, really, really weird bug to have. Where is the bug that you just like, how does this one happen? Where you was an alpha and then you died. No, yeah, why not? <laughs> if you was an alpha, you can't. Yes, but how? <laughs> I you... was an alpha. <laughs> I don't understand. This makes no sense. The good old. Yeah. But yeah. Big pog, nonetheless. Okay, well, do you guys have more to add to Kane? I think Harry's going to be the one, if anyone. It's just really, just people have waited, you know, like two years for this, or how long the champion's been out. It's a good time. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel like a lot of the other champions, like, he's so weird, like that passive, compared to anything else in the game, that I kind of feel like a lot of the time, if this sort of stuff works, it tends to work by accident. Mm -hmm. rather than design like and I don't know like I don't know I defer to your opinion on this Harry but like it feels a little bit like I don't know if that was if that whole passive thing was ever a really good idea his passive? yeah just the fact that he has these two forms no I think that's, I think that's really no, good no the, the, the two forms the way you get there oh the execution on it um I mean yeah it's an interesting one I think it's it makes sense that you get Rast from melee and shadow assassin from range because that's you know how you're going to want to do it. You know, you're, fight, you're versus a lot of ranged champions. You're fighting their marksmen a lot. You just want to be the assassin. Um, likewise for melees, you want to be, you know, you want to be Rast. But maybe not in the jungle it because it's sort of where... limited your your options. Right before that's a big problem. You're like, well, I can't gank top because I want shadow assassin, for example, or mm -hmm. I can't gank bot because I want Rast. And now that is less of an issue. Uh, what so what would you think good. about the idea of just removing that whole distinction, like in terms of being like? Just you get a certain amount of passive charge based oh, on hitting champions, and okay. you, then you just choose. Uh, the issue I potentially see with that one is that, say, you could pick you know Kane top or something versus mm -hmm. you know Maokai or whatever. You go and just beat on him as much as possible, twenty four seven. Stack as fast as you can. Get Shadow Assassin, and then you just run bot. Because right now there is a slight amount of agency over it from the opponents. And that you know, if you're you know playing, I don't know, Soraka, Vayne, or something bot lane, you actually kind of have a say. You go, you go, okay, well, we don't want to get Shadow Assassins. If you think he's going to go, at, you know, that game, we just have to be really careful of his gank. We have to disengage as hard as possible. Just delay it as much as we can, so that you know we have a locket finished or something by the time he goes. By the time he gets that form, you know, you have a bit of a say over it. And I think that could be a problem. Uh, is that you wouldn't have that choice if you took away uh, this, uh, you know, the way the orb system works. Yeah, well, I don't really have anything more to add to it. Um, so moving on to Nico now, uh, her old and her W got hit. I especially like the pop blossom changes. I don't think that you necessarily need to slow people. Um, I think that the stun is nice in itself, and by giving her less time up in the air when you're jumping, I think you get a good like. A good balance between removing the slow and then still having that stun. Yeah, it's no you could if you could get if you can get out of it with a dash or a gap closer or a flashlight, you still can. Mm -hmm. uh, because the radius is slightly bigger than like a flash radius, so it was kind of rough before if you were slowed. So now if you can get out of it, you can get out of it. If you can't, you can't. Yeah, it's a, a little bit more like that. Yeah. I think it's fine. But the stun the stun the stun is just very good for initiation. And I don't think you needed that yeah. extra slow to at least the slow just meant that it was too hard to get away from it. I think you should yeah. rather rely on your team to help you set up that stun. Yeah. Yeah. What were you like, saying, Peter? Sorry. Well, it's, well, it's just along with the rally, it kind of like... It's nice that they're kind of trimming extraneous strength mm -hmm. out, of, out of kits and trying to simplify them. Because Nico did feel like they kind of just threw everything at her abilities, particularly her ultimate, just to try and make sure it worked, considering that it was somewhat weird and I don't think they understood at that point how it was going to work in the real world I mean 
how strong is Nika, right? Because I just perma banned it because I didn't want to see it. Not up until it's apparently it's, it's barely I seen. seen it. It's patch. Yeah, I haven't. I think... I, I think the only one who really plays Nico, at least the only one I've seen play Nico, is Night Blue in the jungle. And even then, unless he's far ahead or at least somewhat ahead of his enemies, yeah. then he's not going to be able to do anything. Yasuo played her a little bit in the mid lane, but he doesn't really play her so much anymore. Wait, but it's did was it Yasuo or was it Nico? It was Mo, the Yasuo player. Yasuo with you didn't Yasuo. understand my joke. Nico can transform himself oh, into Yasuo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was pretty weird. Yeah, it was, that was the, mm. But I just haven't really seen her that much. And every time I feel like the, the weakness that she has right now, I like uh, I like the buff to her W. By the way, mm. sort of give her a bit more, you know, sneakiness. But I think the way it's just her Q just does not do any damage. Like, every time I get hit, I get like rooted, I'm like, oh, this is it, my life's over. And I see the Q can't talk to me. I get hit by three Qs. I'm playing, like, you know, full glass cannon. It's done like 300 damage. I'm like, oh. All right. Guess I'll just go back to farming my jungle. Like, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it feels like her ult is the only ability she has. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, her ult is very, very impactful, but. Yeah. I think there is a lot of. Um, a lot of skill around playing with her W. I think a lot of Nikos don't do that during the lane phase. You have to be really, you have to really make sure that you get that that proc off, and you can do that with the move speed uh, mm -hmm. from Shape Splitter as well. So maybe it's a learning a learning process. Maybe I'm just too low elo. Well, the uh, the Shape Splitter going up to three seconds, like uh, I don't know, like it's it's really tough, isn't it? Because Nico is such a weird champion that I don't know, kind of how long it's going to take for people to really figure out properly yeah and if there's going to be a big difference between people who who like say played 100 games on her versus people who haven't and also it's important to note that this pathing change on the clone is uh, actually a nerf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there might be a, maybe a, a small french case where it's a buff but if you think about it if you could because before the clone could turn if you positioned yourself properly you know such as like by a wall or something the clone would curve around the wall and I'm not going to lie, I didn't know that was a thing until I read these notes. Which means that as me, as someone playing against Nico, could have been very easily duped. Uh, because if you... Most of the time you're assuming that the clone can only run in a straight line, which now it can. So there were options for Nico to duke now. But now if you're playing versus her, and one of them takes a, a slight step to the side or something, and doesn't run in a perfectly straight line, you know which one's the real one immediately. And so it is quite a, a, a nerf to her in that regard, but we'll have to see if that's yeah. actually important. I think it is. I I had worked in the assumption that, well, I know that certainly the, the time duration is a buff, but oh. yeah. I don't know. I, I figured it was supposed to make it more believable per clone, but like, yeah. maybe not. I hadn't thought about that either. Well pointed out, Doctor. Thumbs up. <laughs> hey, well, uh, moving on to Orn. Health and armor has been increased. I quite like these changes. I think this will make him a much stronger pick down in the bottom side because he's been played as a support. Yeah, Papa uh, Smith has been hammering mm -hmm. that one out. Oh, yeah, it? yeah. And it, just with the armor and the health increase, he's going to be less punishable in the laning phase. And I would quickly want to uh, point out that... Remember how I said that Aatrox has too much health? Mm -hmm. He has... what well, Owen has 10 more health than Aatrox in the early game. And Owen's a tank. That's some food for yeah. thoughts. Yeah, well, I mean, he does have some pretty ridiculous uh, armor now. Uh, like, he says his tank is going to go up. I think the... Um, yeah, I'm curious to see if the I think it's, Orn support keeps going. I think this is almost a bit too quick, though, because I feel like a lot of Orn players haven't adapted to the fact that Bellow's Breath didn't give a shield anymore. And I don't know, is it, you know... He was actually fine and just no one knew how to play him. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people were calling out very early on, ah, dead champion now, but it's like, no, you don't have a shield anymore. You still have Unstoppable, and you have to work with that, and you have to sort of play to Orn's strengths. But, uh, so I feel like this is kind of a little bit too fast, but... No, I, I, I agree with you. The it's It feels like the amount of time it would have taken for Orn mains to relearn yeah, to their adapt. engagement plans. Like, yeah, it's just, it's not one patch. Mm. But maybe they just think people aren't going to try unless they think Orn is stronger. I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe they just revert this in in like four weeks' time. Just like go back to what it was. Uh, well, they, like, they, like, they will do. Patch. 
<laughs> it's like, ah, now that you've all figured them out. Well, I think unlike Cassidy, who had a relatively low starting uh, armor anyway, like I feel like this is a smaller, much smaller proportional increase. Mm -hmm. yeah, true. So, like, there's the whole thing, the whole patching theory of, you know, if someone's gotten buffed, people will go back and try them again. I mean, it's it's what it's an eleventh versus a fifth, right? Uh, oh, about a, a sixth, yeah. So, you know, one's gaining eleventh of his armor. Castin lost a sixth. And the Castin yeah. lost growth as well, so. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that Orton needs to be a top laner? Because it feels like they're kind of trying to push towards making that always be the case. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think I it... like the idea of playing him in other lanes is quite cool. And people, although I don't really see it, some people have spoken about Orton Jungle. Mm. Yeah, I played versus the other day. And... I mean, it seemed okay, but it's probably just jungle difference. Because that's what it felt. It wasn't my fault. In general, but, I like but, when when you can play champions in multiple lanes, so even in the jungle. So yeah, I, I like the changes mainly because it makes him a stronger pick in the bottom side, and I I like the idea of you being able to either have him as a support down in the bottom or a top lane tank. So well, I don't I, a, I don't think it's going overboard in terms of buffing him. There's a big benefit of Orn that Orn has in support and jungle over other lanes is the ability to use his passive more often. Mm -hmm. Because if you're playing top or mid, you are worried about just you can't just walk away from the wave. You're gonna you know miss XP or you know wave management is gonna get scuffed or whatever. Jungle you don't care. You just build something whenever you want. It's gonna impact your path by four seconds. Okay, whatever. If you're playing in support, you just step back. You don't need. You just get into a bush. You don't need to farm. You're still in XP range. You're not going to get cancelled because your ADC is probably going to help you out. If you were to play some sort of world where you're playing on bot and you're not the ADC, you still have your support to help you out. If you want to back off between waves or something, you're not going to get frozen uh, and then be unable to break that or something like that. You know, so there is a. It's, I think it's a slight thing to take into consideration is that his passive doesn't. has never really been a factor for top lane players of Orn, right? But in other positions, it can be more important. But you're just never recalled him. Well, to talk more as well about the other half of his passive, which they recently put in. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ellis was talking about that it's worth noting that the support, you know, because obviously that's part of his power budget now is that he gets to uh, upgrade items and much later on. He has to do it himself first, right? Uh, I don't think he... I don't know if he has to do it himself. Uh, I know that he, he does I get he does. it. He, I think he gets it earlier for himself. Yeah, yeah, it's like I think he gets himself at level thirteen, and then one other person at fourteen, another at fifteen, and so on. I don't so think it probably excludes him if he doesn't do it. Um, like that, would, that would seem weird. I want to try that. But while you check that, the what, what I was going to uh, go with this I was, that, okay. was that he's going to level a lot slower yes. as a support than he would as a top laner. Yeah, that's true. So, so um, you're, you're missing out on that 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 power for a larger proportion of the game. Uh, yeah, just for the for the curious. Uh, when he reaches level 13, any upgradable item uh, gets upgraded for free uh, for him, mm -hmm. up to a maximum of two. I don't know he could have two, but he can. Mm. Additionally, for every level after 13, so 14, 15, 16, 17, he can upgrade one other person. Um, so yeah, he gets himself at 13, and then others at further levels. And yeah, when was the last time you saw a, a you know level 15 support, right? Because realistically, that's what you want. You want to hit. You have to hit level 14 on Orn. To buff your ADC, and obviously this thing is meant as a, you know, seventh item, right? It's this mm. his passive is supposed to win you games at the sixth item point. Other than mm. that, it's nice that your teammates aren't being trapped into wasting one K because the items are not well; they were not cost efficient. But no, it's just building on your slot efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, and you also when does this work? Was that last patch you got given this? Yeah, he just gained so. bonus. I, I do last assist. patch so eight point twenty four. Yeah, that yeah, I was... didn't know that one. He just gets free armor and magic resist. Yeah, they yeah. they nerfed his ultimate pretty hard though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if Quite you right don't right. use it, at... well, I mean that's another reason why support like raises some questions for me, just because presumably as a support you're spending more time doing short range ults than long range ults. So I don't know. Like I guess it's probably still decent. Yeah. Well, well uh... sorry, doctor. No, so we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah. Well, talking about supports, we also have Rakan. And uh, I really like the W changes, the, the dash speed, because I don't think you should be forced to pick someone like Tom Kench or 
uh, another very like supportive support, someone who can save your AD carry. I don't think you should be forced to do that just because your account is picked. Mm. Uh, so I like that your the changes are giving him less speed, but you still get uh, an incentive to buy boots because then you get more speed on your dash. Yeah, it's they just his ult engage is now a little worse than just a. Uh, well, I know I, I would say it's much worse. <laughs> it went from oh, yeah. two fifty. Oh, sorry, two, yeah. 2,050 to 1,400. Well, That's a There's a large speed speed difference. It is, uh, it's still, the, the important part is that it doesn't scale for his movement speed, it just scales off of boots. That's the part that hits his ult. It is a large number difference, but it's also, it's a short range ability, right? So it's, you're not really feeling too much. And basically what Riot have done is, you can see in this sort of second part, effect delay has been changed to 0.15 seconds. And I've heard some confusion over what that means. So what it means is not his knockup isn't faster, but there is there was a small there's a small pause from his W. His W goes in, in sort of three parts. You cast the spell, uh, so you start the dash. That's part one. Finish the dash is part two, and you end up at the end location. And then part three is start the knockup. And so they have shortened the duration between parts two and three. Uh, he actually makes the circle appear around himself. So he doesn't jump faster once the circle appears. He just makes that circle appear faster than before. And the way that works out with the changes to the speed is that at max range, he is uh, slower, or you know, it takes slightly longer to knock someone up, but at short range, it is faster. And the reason they did that, I think, was it was to do with um, balancing... Because uh, it, it sounds like... Uh, just to give uh, low elo players more time to respond because in high elo his engage was sort of where they wanted it because it would just get cancelled if he did it poorly uh, like a very telegraph max range engage versus you know leona thrash or something but they wanted to increase that at uh, lower elo brackets where reaction times might be slower or pings might be higher that i just it. like to, to add on to that the uh reddit uh, made a good point of saying that the uh that you can't yeah you know, there were other factors as well to play into the into how fast it was with the you know using movement speed runes or uh i think there his... are no movement speed runes <laughs> there's no movement speed runes that you will acknowledge at least there's um, there's okay celerity and there's celerity and water walking approach yeah, water speed doesn't count really. because you can't you can't cc them but it? like you can't use items to pump up your movement speed before you do it anymore either. Yeah. Or that's true. I think does his alt give him movement speed? Yes. So that's not going to play into it either. So I think it yeah, might that, be. That's so the, you... That was the point of the change from percent to boot scaling. Mm -hmm. The second ability that scales with boots behind uh, Kaiser passive. Yeah, it's not a commonly visited. A common well. scaling. <laughs> no. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm in a favor of it. I mean you see it in competitive play a lot of time that, you know, someone just makes these ludicrously long range engages. You mentioned there are some champions you can take to stop it, but I think a lot of time it's not that practical just because you know, just be taking champions just to stop the support. Yeah, I mean he was he's just been a little bit too strong and competitive for a while. How this affects solo queue, I'm not sure. I did hear some people complaining, especially now that he's lost uh, the spore armor as well, is so he's lost as much as Orn gained. They both his had the his same stats base for armor are still fairly yeah. ridiculous. It's it's decent, you know, bearing in mind that he's an engaged support, right? But he's not actually a tank. And so he's still sort of in this weird middle ground of, well, am I building tank or am I building, you know, Enchanter? Mm -hmm. I personally think he fits more on the Enchanter side. Because I've always seen that Orn, that Rakan shouldn't be an engage. He should be a distraction. Because that's, really, that's like his personality, right? It's just this sort of big... Uh, showy bird of paradise type thing that's just meant to sort of stall you around whilst he dips in and out. Uh, this changes nothing about that, but losing the armor just makes him a little bit less engaging. So maybe people will alter their playstyles a little bit. But realistically, mm -hmm. I think it just means his lane face is harder. For it seems to be a little bit like no reason because he's not really a lane bully. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Harry, Shavana, your oh, wow. your jungle main. Tell me about these changes. People keep playing AP Shivana and I don't know <laughs> My top laner is obsessed with it as well for a, a national tournament that we play. Well, there you go. It's more rewarding to go for the Flame Breath Max. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
I, don't, I honestly can tell you, people keep building AP Shivana. And it's the only way that she sees any play right now, in jungle as well. But it's so bad, because if she doesn't hit... She only she has an ability that's got a 7 second cooldown or whatever it is, which is inside a minute cooldown in her ult. Because her E is useless if she's not ulted. So you got to ult first, and so if ever you see Shivana in ult, you're like, okay, back off. And then no one respects the, uh, the burn left behind from her E either. Like not a single person. And it's like stand on. It's like, oh, why did I lose my health? It's like singed poison. Back one. But so this doesn't really affect AP Shivana. It still affects the on hit one, which is still terrible. So it's nice and it gives you that little bit extra dragon control. But I don't like the fact that her passive is only around dragons because it can just make her a complete ir irrelevant champion if she doesn't have dragon control. Yeah. Yeah. And though she should because she does it so so much extra damage on it now, which means she can solo it better in higher brackets. The higher elo brackets, people will just know that Shivana is going to hard tunnel vision on getting those dragons. So if you can shut her down, just ward it, stop her soloing them, then she's not a champion. And this doesn't do anything to fix that. I do think that having her passive revolve around dragons is weird. Yeah. Like, especially since it's like, uh, I don't know, presumably there's a law reason why Shivana as a dragon loves murdering dragons. But she's like half dragon or something. I, yeah, I don't she's know, half but... a dragon, I guess. But yeah, like it, it does. It doesn't make sense that a dragon wants yeah. to kill other dragons unless there's law reason, like Peter said. Yeah, it's I don't know, it's weird. They really want to go in on this. Oh, dragons! Oh, people like dragons. That's the thing. But I think it should be a part of her passive. I don't think it should be like the yeah, passive. It's, it's the just focus. Weird. Yeah, that yeah. there is a there is a real possibility that she just plays the game without a passive most of the time. Yeah, I. I I feel like she's this champion with such old design on her that yeah. I would not. At all, I don't think anyone's gonna be bummed out if they just change nearly everything about Shivana. Like, yeah. and because you know she's just weird, old, clunky. Yeah, not a great champ, but slightly better clear speeds than Dragon Solos. So, well, hey, I think she uh, does Shivana hard farm. I don't play a lot. Of Pretty Shivana. much, she can't gank. <laughs> yeah, so can't. again. Even when you hit six, you still struggle. It's like she used yeah. to be the best duelist in the game, and that was her thing. She just level two you, uh, invades and whatnot. But that was a long, long time ago. Now she's just irrelevant. But I think that's all there is, really. It's a, if you're a Shivana player, cool. But no one's a Shivana player, so yeah. I'm I'm definitely gonna try her out in this patch, but yeah, I don't anticipate her actually being good. Nah, just play since then. <laughs> Alrighty guys, uh, since we're reaching that hour mark, and we've been going on for an hour, uh, I'm gonna speed things up a bit. Alright. Tom Kench, anyone has anything to add? Just a fix for pro play. Good. Needed it. Yeah, it's no second devour from using your ult, which is probably good. Yep. Alright. Ergot, however, we need to talk about. Um, I think the W changes is definitely Huge. a start to how obnoxious he can be in his laning phase. I think yes. Fear Beyond Death should be hit as well. It should be scaling in order to give top lane tanks an easier time surviving ganks. Right now it's 25% uh, max health. I think it should be 15 slash 20 slash 25. Okay, mm. I, thought you, I thought you meant like scale with items. No, 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 just the scaling health instead. Because I think 25 is too high I, a ratio to begin with. Yeah, I... I think that's too high early, but also at the same time, it's his only way to get kills in those lanes. It's the only way, and he's a lane bully, right? He's he's meant to be, he's meant to sort of win lane. So I think you don't want to hit it too hard, but I don't know the idea that it has some sort of scaling in it somewhere. I'm not sure how though. Yeah. But yeah, this W change is, is huge. Well, you could say then 20, 22 and a half, and then 25. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Peter? I mean, the, the, the obvious thing which a lot of people have been saying is just, you know, it's a longer window to trade with. Uh, I think it drops off as you level. Uh, I'm just having a quick check through and just seeing how the... Let's see, so... Well, it doesn't drop off while you level. Wait, are you talking about the W or... Alt? Yeah, the, the W oh, cooldown. Yeah. Uh, it starts... It matters most at level 1, and then it starts mattering less and less as you level it up more. Mm -hmm. But you don't level it up more, so... Okay. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, isn't the most common one Q, Q then W? I thought it was Q E W, but that's what I was trying to look up, just so I could 
I don't know. In any case, it's it's nice, right? His his W needs a much higher cooldown, and it has one. So yeah, I still needs. think he's probably going to be still very very good. I just I think if we're, tra if we're trying to speed this one up, yeah, a, a ways to go. Yeah, um, it's just because we still have a lot of stuff to go through. So yeah, yeah. well, uh, Volibear, guys, nice. have anything to add? Very nice buff. Yep. Yeah. I have no idea where Volibear went. He was really OP for that one patch. He didn't get changed at all, and then people just stopped playing him. But this E buff, real nice. I miss seeing yeah. him uh, in competitive play. I think uh, E is definitely the start. I want to see some buffs on this W in order for him to really make a comeback. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's still got similar to Shivana, like, kind of blah design. No, he's, yeah, his design's kind of rough. Um, I don't know now if you go... Because I know that... Um, Trick2G was playing a little bit of Volibear in uh, Twitch Rivals scrims. Mm -hmm. And I think he was going Predator. And Trick2G you know, plays a fair amount of Volibear. He's a, a good resource. But I don't know if uh, Predator's the best rune, which definitely helps his ganks. But, um, or if it's Aftershock, because Aftershock was one of the reasons why he was so strong. Or maybe now with Inhaler Blades, just to ramp up his W faster. I'm really not sure. But I think probably I think probably Predator. I think Predator would make the most sense, but... I think, yeah, Aftershock would still... I mean, he's already ridiculously hard to put down. Yeah. I don't know if he exactly. more of that. Uh, you always need more. It's just, if, if you're going like... in first, you fling someone, and now you actually kind of can fling a tank because you're getting this percent max health damage. You know, it's not a terrible option. It's mm -hmm. just nice to have that extra beefiness, especially if you're already low on health. You can engage the fight, proc your passive, and whilst you're getting sort of chunked out in the fight, you're... Aftershock is stopping them from bursting through your passive, uh, which is really important. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I would mind seeing some more Volibear around. But well, I'll, say, like... I'll give him a try this patch. Yeah. I'd, he... I'd love to see more Volibear. It's a very specific subset, though, of dashing champions with enough health to make. No, because things. it's his Q as well. It's, it's oh, that's right. You, yes, you can fling someone and use it on them. Yeah. Because Sorry, I don't see enough body better to notice. This bonus damage is part of the reason why he was so... why Because the buff they originally gave him was his E knocked back uh, and did a little bit of bonus damage. Or it didn't knock back, it just like m like millisecond stun, just the stuff to sort of stop channels or whatever, on dashing slash airborne targets. Mm -hmm. uh, so now they've just decided the damage wasn't slightly high enough for whatever reason to have an AP ratio. So they've just gone to give it max health, which is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, I don't know what... <sighs> and it's good versus uh, jungle camps because it doesn't say it has a cap. So that's real good versus you know blue buff and grog and crubs. Yeah, that's a good point. But you can't fling barons though. Nah, I like it. Are you sure? <laughs> Have you tried? It's working like dragon's airborne. <laughs> the good old days, just fling the baron back to the opposing team's base. <laughs> okay, well moving on to York. You guys have anything to add? Um, nice, good, good change. Yeah, no, I think this is really big. Like, it's kind of hard to follow all the stuff that's going on here. But man, I used to play York bef before he was cool. And Same. when he was just extremely annoying instead. Uh, I think the him being able to drag his alt bot, his um, maiden around with him all the time, like that's, that's kind it. of, yeah, that's hard to read, but I think that's going to significantly well, make him better. Plus, plus the, be maiden is, the maiden is much better in the late game now as well because of the 70% Yorick health. Yeah, because remember, it's, it's not health scaling, total uh, bonus health, it's just max health. So this is, I think it's pretty much enough at level six but if you've bought a single ruby crystal it's a buff you know um yeah. at all stages it's just, as long as you're obviously you know not building full ap york or whatever but it's nice that you have a choice in where the maiden goes now because a lot of people sort of like the fact that she was independent and that was a big part of the, the theme of the champion and right very much like that when they designed it but now you just have a choice you can keep it with you or you can you know, send her on her way and i think that's fine uh, and like, if, the you, passive buff is if nice. you fight him with the maiden up like and she's hitting you as well like, the damage is crazy. Yeah. It's, her damage isn't too much. It's the percent bonus health damage that Yorick gets uh, when he hits them as well. Yeah. Like, as, the, as, the as a two. To the walkers as well. The, the graves and the fact that the walkers actually now deal damage if you're not in the lane, which is a big problem with her split. So maybe her split will actually be useful now. Because before, you know, it's just, she just get one hit by a tower or something. You're right. It's like, it's her, his passive is really only changing to late game. So I don't know. Like, I hope he's going to be good. I'm definitely going to be giving him a try. He seems interesting. Yeah, yeah could be strong. Cool. Moving on to Syra. Mana regen Hello. has been decreased. Uh, yeah. So Why does like... she have that much mana regen? Yeah, exactly. 
Mana regen is the problem in all AP supports that are OP right now. You know, Brand Fed, Cosira. Mana regen is the problem. I was thinking just nerf spell feasts. But, you know, I guess you can... You can also just nerf the champions. Uh, yes, no. I don't think we saw too much play of Syrah anyway in the bottom side. Uh, no, she is the best support in the game. Yeah, the, it's because no one's got any mana resist down the bottom lane. So, That's also true. like, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure this is going to be a major thing. Um, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know how it works out, but definitely a, a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think the Spell Thief, isn't it still percentage-based? So that's going to be less from mm -hmm. Spell Thief as well. Well, yeah, because every, you're right, every mana region item is based off of your base mana region. So. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be even less than it looks. Neat. Right. Well, Evelyn, quality of uh, life changes. Doctor, are you nice. happy? Well, yeah, but I particularly like the W on. It doesn't fizzle anymore. Real good, because that's... Mm annoying when that happened um yeah just bug fix on the e and uh the buffering on the oh again quite nice if you if you're playing on high ping you can still combo people uh real nice yeah yeah, and, and yeah. The, and, and everything here is great if you're an eve player which i am so but it's i mean it's all quality of life stuff really yes so like yeah. it's not gonna make it significantly better especially considering again as we'll get to jungle hard farming it's yeah. less good yes and then we have cleft but that's a that's change a that that's a change that went live last patch. Yeah. Uh, and we have Everything minimap has, targeting, so that means that now uh, you can, what, like, target your minimap? Or you uh, could, you, I mean, you can no map. longer target your minimap if you want to use yeah. Tidal Wave. It was or... between those two spells, I think, specifically. Yeah, it's just yeah. those two. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Which is fine, because that was a, a, a harsh point for a lot of people. Okay, guys. So now we're getting to a bit more of an interesting thing items. Oblivion Orb and Morella Nomicon. Oblivion Orb has had a cost increased and ability power decreased. And Morella Nomicon has had an ability power decreased while also the cost has been decreased. This took right two years. <laughs> for this. Oh, no for if these are the problem. I well, mean, okay. I, mean, I, th cost I, I think the problem kind of lies in Morella Nomicon bringing too much in AP. AP and Magic Pen to the table. A lot of people just don't finish the Morellos. That's yeah, like, I was gonna say it's more the Oblivion Orb. And That's now you probably won't. Well, I like the I like the idea of having the Oblivion Orb being an intermediate between rounding out an item and then not doing that. Yeah, I mean, I think the distance between Orb and Morellos is really nice, but now I'm just never gonna finish Morellos. Like if I'm playing Eve, I hardly finished it before. I would just go Silk Shoes, Orb, and then Lich Brain. And well, now I'm, definitely, I'm finishing it last night. What's the point? I thought the uh, the idea was that it, the double penetration, like the Sorcerer Boots and Oblivion Orb was too strong. They're too strong, so we've nerfed neither of them. <laughs> well, I mean, they've nerfed... Oblivion well, the Oblivion Orb nerf... Like, you're right that the Oblivion Orb's probably just, uh, still never going to get upgraded, but, like, I don't know. Like, it's an extra wave's worth of creeps. Yeah, it's... I don't know. The cost part is, is fine, but... Also, supports know. were getting this because... Well, we're talking about Zyra and Brand, who've just yeah. been nerfed since and patch. It's another one to hit them. They still will, because the, it was nerfed to low, you know, AP damage and low ratios, but AP supports are strong because they don't have ratios. Yeah, you still have the magic pen. Yeah. Pen is all they wanted. This item could literally just give pen. They'd probably still buy it. I think yeah. maybe not for 1600 gold, but you know. Well, tw 20 ability power is still a lot, and the magic pen is crazy. Yeah, and it's the same for Morellos. It's like, okay, 10 AP is... Uh, okay amount but meh. if this if this is another reason why brand and zyra support are less good then I'll it, take it. it it doesn't affect them in the slightest yeah, i don't so, i i think they're well, still gonna buy it but that's, that's true it affects them 100 gold yeah okay it affects them 100 okay. gold but you know that's... well 100 gold is a lot for yeah support, quote it's... unquote for support yeah what is it? it's it's 90 seconds is what it is yeah they stay 90 seconds longer to get three procs off of their uh off there, yeah, I think that's significant. All right. Well, uh, Sunfire Cape then. Cost has been decreased by 150 gold. That's nice. Yeah, I think I think it's still too expensive for some bruisers to rush as a first item, but maybe second item if they're struggling with uh, wave clearing and need some armor. No, I think it's um because basically the only people the only champion that builds it now is Poppy, but that's because she's the only viable top. Well, player. you also oh, have Mal Malphite building it. Yeah, like you can. So you want it on Malphite and Malkai, but you can't play those champions. <laughs> the only one you can play is Poppy because she does good into Riven and into Aatrox. Um, the other champion is just not playable. 
So I don't know if this will now make them playable. Probably not, but Sunfire Cape itself is still a decent item. It's just that if you're getting it, you're getting it first. And if you're a champion that gets it first, you're not playable. Uh, and obviously you don't build a jungle because you can just get sent to Hulk. Jungle being where most playable tanks reside. I think you guys are missing that this is an indirect Orm buff. Aha! Hey! Yeah, Peter! That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Orn would love to build this item. Well, I mean, it's more that he can upgrade his allies once. Yeah, he... But if you've got well, you can also upgrade. You can also upgrade. That, you can also yikes. upgrade your your own. Um, Get your first as well. Kill. Yeah, I was assuming that you wouldn't want to go to the top lane with all. Fair. But yeah. All right. Overheal. Hurrah! Nice. Yeah. So, uh, well, I like that overheal and bloodline. They kind of fit together because yeah. now you can heal. You can shield yourself with the overheal and. You get more max life steal from the bloodline. Uh, I especially like that it helps eighty carries in the late game. Though I think that Overheal could now be a choice for self healing boosters like Aatrox, Irelia, uh, Kane, or even Darius. Um, so I think that I'm... that is something that they have to be wary of. Maybe. Mm. I'm not sure. Would I prefer Overheal over tenacity on those champions? Because if you're uh, over um. Triumph, because if you're building a lot of health, it's real nice. And I think you're playing Kane, you go to one HP, you ult someone, and if it kills them, you're just full health again because of Triumph and your ult thing. So, I'm not. Yeah. No, I feel like no. You, I feel like you would take it on tanks, on those tanks, because to get that health, you have to be in a fight, and if you're in a fight, then you're not full health, so you're not getting the overkill shield. Mm, yeah. Definitely good on ADCs though. Yeah, especially if you're made, made, for, made for marksman. Well, they've got the Legend Bloodline just below that, which is gonna yes. play nicely with it as well. I like the Bloodline buff. Yeah, a max tax, uh, double then life steal uh, or max life steal in general being yes. buffed. That's extremely good for AD carries. Yeah, it's really nice. I've always thought that room was criminally underrated, but at the same time, you've never really wanted it. You know, so yeah. definitely nice. If you want life steal, it's well, an option. I used to run it a lot. Uh, yeah, I was I, I'm probably Pinterest. I'm probably gonna run it more now. It's like, yeah, I used to take on Kindred, and then I was like, yeah, I'll probably just take the attack speed. Now, i probably still take the attack speed, because I go Blade first item, but... It's nice. If you want the life steal, and you don't think you fit it anywhere into your build early on, it's nice. I mean, think about it. You have, like, but ADC I... build. You go Boots, i.e. Stormraiser, Zeal Zeal, um, Armor Pen, or something. I don't know, and then you sell Stormraiser for, like, GA or something. It's very possible, but you get a build with zero life steal in it. Mm, I want to... Go back and hit on the self healing bruises just again okay. because you already have Kane who goes uh, domination plus precision. You have Darius who goes precision plus resolve, and Irelia goes precision plus resolve. So now it makes for, it, it can be a choice for them if they want to go for more uh, self healing. Mm, I but think like, still not because well, they don't because it's it's life steal, not spell back. Well, I'm just saying that it's a possibility for them. Not that they're going to do that, but it's a possibility yeah. if they think they have the opportunity to heal themselves that much. I think it's just so rare that you're actually getting autos, uh, in at least in team fights, you know, event. Like for Aurelia, you get like one auto down. Well, it, does, it doesn't it does have to be, it doesn't have rifles. to be from lifesteal. It's just from self-heal. No, it's like, oh, wait, are you on about overheal or bloodline? I'm about overheal. Oh, you've gone back to overheal? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize you were talking about I overheal. I thought you were talking about bloodline. Um, oh, no, no, no. I'm talking it, about overheal. In a fight, you're not at full health, so you're not getting healed. It's like, if you were snowballing really hard, yes. But then you wouldn't need it anyway. You know? Yeah. Uh, let's. Well, there's also the change to cut down, which is the next one along, which is going to be another thing which helps out AD carries I potentially. Do not understand this change at all. Okay, so P Peter, uh, help him understand. Uh, so Wait, I got the rune wrong. Rather Maybe than <laughs> explain <laughs> it to him like he's a five-year-old. I thought this was the other one. I thought this was last stand. Was... Uh, from my, I don't like, necessarily understand this in detail, but the it means that you no longer have to have a flat amount more max health than you. Yeah. So it's I think from what I understand, it's generally easier to get off early because people's base health can be quite disparate between them. Yeah. I guess particularly if there's a tanky jungler ganking you or whatever. No, yeah, yeah, okay. It's a mid, it's a mid game buff, but a late game nerf. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I, I thought it was um, which I thought it was uh, what's the one that only Trindamir and no one else in the game takes? 
Oh, the one where you get lots of damage health. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was last time. I was really confused. I was like, why does it matter? It looks very similar. Yeah, okay. It's uh, also similar in that nobody really takes it. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a mid game buff for ADCs, right? If you're a one K health there, it's UK health. Neat. Outside of yeah. that. Well, obviously like... you lose two percent damage later, but no ADCs were taking it anyway, because they're all taking triumph, and if you're taking triumph, then you want um what you call it? Uh, coup de grass. But if you're no longer taking triumph because you're taking overheal. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Well, we also have absolute focus, Good. which uh, let's take some damage out of the game. Yep. Broken rune. Good to see it. The left. It's just you had to take it on every jungler. You well, you, you, to also, you, you also took it on what like every marksman, more or less. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, I think it's a bit ironic that a sorcery tree is getting nerfed because of AD users. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like to. Uh, I still think you have to go sorcery on every jungler because I think water walking is giga broken, and so I, that feels kind of mm. bad for that. But there's a lot of champions that you can just go transcendence on. I think. I think you're still gonna go. Uh, you're still gonna go absolute focus on marksman because there's really not a better choice for them in the sorcery tree if, because if you st you still want sorcery. gathering storm, right? Yeah. So it depends if you're going. Um, it depends what marksman you are and if well no, it, you're always going to sorcery second right yeah you're not you're yeah. not you're not going to go for what like the movement speed one celerity uh on that, and, unless you're yeah. severe even on hecarim it's a worthless rune but so you're never going you're always going to sorcery as your secondary tree so yeah. you have the choice of the other rows as well so if you have to have gathering storm i think mana flow band is good if you're playing you know ezreal uh, that's fine if you're playing a caster maybe even lucian you want mana flow band um mm. Well, the other ones, Nimbus Cloak is pretty bad on most ADCs, except Sinner, but on Sinner you might want it, that's fine. Um, Transcendence can be pretty good if you're building a Black Cleaver, for example. Uh, real good. So, I think there are definitely options in that tree. You don't have to go Absolute Focus, because right now, it's what, it's, it's 2 AD at level 1. Uh, and, oh, they haven't got rid of the base amount, though, actually. Because Absolute Focus has two parts. It has this part, that's the 70% health or above, you get free damage. And then there's also, it also just gives you like extra AD or AP. Is it? I thought it was only... No, it's split, it's split in two halves. One half you get all the time, and the other half you only get if you're above 70%. Oh, interesting. I never looked too close yeah, to that. Yeah, that's right. You have a passive and you have uh, adaptive. Hmm. Wait. No, oh, I'm an idiot. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? No, that's not right. Wait, what are you? Yeah, what yeah, are you I'm talking reading, about? I'm reading the rune. I'm, lo I'm looking. You... Uh, wait, it might have been changed. The one I'm looking at. What, what are we doing? Collection runes. What's my greatest page gone? Yeah. No, I've. I've. Okay. I don't. Well, let's not stick on this too long because it's not really that that important anyway. But the uh, I don't think you do. I don't think there is two parts to it. It's just an explanation of. What it yeah, the, just explains there's what only the 70% over max health, which is when you gain your extra stats. Anyway, uh, rune stats, you guys have anything to add to that? Uh, it's just nice. it's going Less up, damage in the game, yeah, Hooray. going up a bit and down a bit. Yeah, well, uh, Peter, you said less damage in the game, ignite has been yep. nerfed. I don't think there's anything wrong with having the game just be less bursty. Like to give people, like with the Rakan thing, just to give people more of a chance to actually play, unless kind of you're just dead. Like, we've been talking about the various things that are going to help out AD carries in small ways, mm -hmm. and that's going to be another reason why they're a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, Ignite is just OP. I like that they've changed the cooldown as well at the same time. It's a bit risky, right? I don't like to change two things at once because then they think mm. they might over or undershoot it. It's hard to get a read on how much the effect is and so the fact they've done both does make me think a little bit but they've actually been looking at this for a while and they've tried it in-house or whatever because they've they don't like basically they've buffed it and nerfed it at the same time so now it's hard to tell is it actually yeah. better or worse but i do because if they hadn't changed the cooldown then you end up in a meta where everyone's just running you know exhaust or barrier or tp and it's just really boring again so the fact that ignite is still definitely an option is nice mm -hmm. well, what do you guys think about putting scaling onto ignite like has just... scaling as in ratio scaling, yeah. Uh, then it can't be played support. Well, I that's what I mean. Any, any summoner spell should have ratio scaling. 
That's the point, right? Is that they're meant to be equal across all champions. And it gets so much harder as well if you give it ratio scaling to tell how much damage it's doing. Um, I think was, that gets really rough. I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting thought. Just kind of I, I think up. it's just. I think it's a very nice way that they've toned down Knight. Like it's still strong in the early game, but it's just much worse in the late game. And you should be punished for picking an early game summoner spell. Uh, but you still have a uptime of three minutes instead of three and a half. I think it's a good change. Yeah. Well, I, I think like maybe there's like edge cases like Shaco jungle. I think maybe for some champions, like they're gonna appreciate the cooldown. Uh, yeah, buff. it's it's just it's a buff and enough at the same time, and I think that's that's fine. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna be using, well, it so on... you're right. I was wrong about absolute focus. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just misread the part where I said it gives AD and AP at level one. I was like, ah, oh, that's excellent. that's literally an explanatory note as to what adaptive damage is. Yeah, like, like it's it's telling you what it gives at level one, but I thought that was on top of the. Uh... <laughs> So I feel like there's so many runes that don't tell you how much they actually do, right? You have to go into the... I think you press shift when you're looking at them or whatever to get the proper um, descriptions. When you're in-game, I mean. Like, you can't tell the cooldown of Predator until you use it, you know? Really? really? There's, so, there's so many runes that oh, are just like, oh, yeah. it has a cooldown between this and that, uh, or, you know, Predator's case now, and it's like, damage between this and that. It's like, you're giving you AD or AP between this and that. And on the one hand, it doesn't matter because you know how much AD and AP you have, right? So it's fine. But at the same time, I'd still like to know how much I'm getting so I can test efficiency without having to get a calculator. Yes, yeah. I, I generally think having better clarity in game is good. Yeah. Well, uh, moving on to game pacing, we have Hand of Baron being uh, nerfed in the early game, and we have Inhibitor and Nexus Turrets being buffed at all times. Uh, so the game down. Yeah, I think that's a fine nerf to Hand of Baron starting out because I think. Two to three item powers by team comps are too prevalent. So now having something that doesn't end games at 20 25 minutes but still make you strong is going to be uh, helpful in terms of making it a viable choice to go for that Baron. But it, I still think that it, Baron in itself should be a late game thing, which is now what it is more late game at 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, personal opinion, I really like the pace of the game right now. I like. Um these sort of like 25 minute games i think that's great and sure people spike like a, a two item spike you know think carver's jungle and carver's and vein really strong champions because they get their late game spike at two items carver's you know with his ludens dual pen and then a death cap or something and you know vein blade Gwinsu's, that's it that's all you need and i think i'm i'm happy with that but uh i see i know that not everyone agrees and so right is just sort of trying to slow it down a little bit but like for example, now Inhib and Nexus Taurus uh, have the same uh, 30 minutes, but they have uh, 45 minutes. It's like, eh. I don't want games being 45 minutes long. And that's not what that means, but, you know. Well, I, f I yeah. think there should be a choice between still going for that 20, 25 minute game yeah, with I your team comp and then going for like a 40 minute game. And, yeah. I think, and you still have that choice now. While it is weaker... It, the hand of Baron, of course, in the early game. I still think that you can play for the mid game. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. I definitely don't think it's gonna make it forty-five minutes long. But I think it'll maybe add like five minutes to the game or something, which I can definitely live with. Yeah, I like my games being under thirty minutes. That's just me personally. Yeah, that's all right. So inhibitor next to turrets. You guys have anything to add to that? It again makes it a bit same. harder to end the game. Yes, yeah, the same thing prolongs the game like before you got 70 armor and magic resist at 45 minutes now you just have that all the time yeah yeah okay well harry i'm gonna give you this to you <laughs> jungle right. camp experience you have controversial. now you have one minute there's nothing controversial about this pete this, ch this change makes absolutely zero sense the problem with jungle i should also say i'm aggressively biased here because this is, I like this meta. I mean, I don't mind playing tanks, but a meta where it's about early fighting and you're playing Graves, Kha'Zix, Kindred, that's my favorite. I don't mind Szechuan that, but I like how it is right now. But this is not the problem. The problem that people have with jungle right now is Scuttle Crab. And I like Scuttle Crab. I like this meta, but a lot of people think, uh, you know, Crab's too OP and it dominates what you can and can't play. Uh, it's all about mid difference, you know, which lane has priority and who's rotating first to help you take the crab, etc., etc. All true. So, the reasonable thing to do here is you nerf Crab. 
I was like, oh, maybe he changed XP a little bit. But what Riot have decided in their infinite wisdom is to lower the amount of XP you get uh, from jungle camps later on in the game. The problem that laners have with junglers is they have too much impact early. And so what this does is, theoretically, it punishes you for ganking because you have to go back and farm. However, because it doesn't actually change the first spawns of anything, you still can just do nothing but gank on Xin Zhao and Camille or something, and you're not going to get punished until you go back for extra camps later on. And then on top of that, you can then just tax the waves anyway. So I feel like this really doesn't actually change a lot in terms of what anyone wants the game to be. It just feels worse if you're a jungler. And they did nerf Scuttle, and they lowered the golden XP on it, but again, not at level 1, so it's still hotly contested in the, in the early game. Still controls the meta from that shape. You can so, still get level 3 off of going for red crocs and yeah, the, the, the initial Initial clues have not changed at all. It's only once they can start respawning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because the crab is is still the same as it is level one, it is still. And actually, I think it's the, it's the same. Yeah, for all levels, the crab is still the most gold and experience rich uh, objective. So people still it even though it's worse than it was last patch, it's still comparatively better than every other camp. So people are still going to tunnel on it really hard. Again, I'm actually a fan of that. But for everyone else that wants this to change nothing changes except the game just feels worse if you're a jungler. And now I've got to play my placements on this! Yeah! Well, to be fair, everybody <laughs> in the jungle is doing the same thing, so like, while the position itself might be worse, at least, you know, everyone's worse across the board, unless, as you said, they spend all their time ganking, so, so they don't care. The reason that Riot did this is to lower jungle XP comparative to laners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's right. I think that basically jungler and I think a lot of people agree is jungle should be lower level than solo lanes, a uh, higher level than duo lane, right? Somewhere in the yeah. middle, nice sweet spot. Because a lot of laners uh, don't want jungler to turn up same level as them and one v one them. And I agree, that's not the role of the jungle. You shouldn't. I shouldn't be able to just walk into a lane and one v one the opponent unless I'm you know fed. Uh, yeah. And so this does affect that. However, you now have the reverse in that a, a laner can just walk into the jungle and solo the jungler if you go too far. Yeah, you know? and. Any jungler that's played versus Talon can just tell you that, you know, you go to take your second chicken support, suddenly he leaps over the wall, tier map breaks the entire camp, takes everything, and then kills you at the same time. It's like, oh, well, guess I should have respected the level 4 Talon. But I feel like I, I'm a little bit worried that that's going to happen more now. And on top of this, uh, definitely an issue that I have uh, jungling, um, and this might just be me, is that I feel kind of behind in XP if, it, if the game is either uh, we're not in control of the map, or if there's a lot of fighting going on, because you don't get too much chances to farm, because you have to sort of hang around in case a skirmish breaks out, you know, if you're playing Zack, you just sort of have to be sat behind a wall waiting to engage with your hook, with your elastic slingshot or something. And in mm. these types of situations, if you have very hectic games, where there's just fighting all the time, which is pretty common mm -hmm. right now, you will fall even further behind in XP, because the camps that you are getting are now worth less. Yeah, that does seem like that's going to be a a major problem and I'm not really sure what the what that kind of is accomplishing as a design goal yeah it but, doesn't fix any of the problems that anyone playing the game wants so about the challenge except the mind, occasional top doctor, about the challenge in mind yes what about it no I'm not a fan either I mean okay so basically why it's not ignite. it's the same as ignite isn't they want to get rid of true damage and I like that but I really did like the fact that it gives vision I think that now it doesn't give vision uh, I may not take it anymore because that was very important that someone couldn't run into a bush to get away from targeted things. And you still have the damage reduction part, uh, but mm -hmm. the damage itself is low. I think it's just going to have to be a feel thing. I'm going to have to try it out. And also, whilst we're on the topic of jungle, if we just go into the bug fixes real quick, because there's one really important one in here. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't okay. know if you wanted to talk about bug fixes or not. Yeah, well, if you guys have anything to add to it. Yeah. Well, the uh, I mean, there's some interesting ones. Um, oh, they fixed... I didn't even see the one about Mordecai, so Passive, of course. But um, Halo Blaze now properly procs. The first basic attack causes a champion to exit camouflage. Example, Twitch's ambush, Rengar's Thrill of the Hunt. Rengar's Thrill of the Hunt being the most important thing in this patch note, um, outside of the cane. Uh, because Rengar cannot use Halo Blaze right now, it's bugged, it doesn't work on his leap. I do not know if, that was, if it was on his initial leap or on his ult leap, but now if it is definitely working on his ult leap, mm -hmm. his damage has just gone through the roof. Uh, real, real nice. And I guess actually, if you play Twitch Jungle as well, or if you play any Twitch, I think Halo Blaze Twitch is going to be real nice as well. Mm. Um, so, lots of benefits to to junglers in those bug fixes. And not lots of benefits to junglers in the patches above it. 
<laughs> All right. Well, Peter. Uh, Peter, do you have anything to add? Uh, blue smoke for life. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have anything to add to the jungle camp experiences. I think uh, Harry hit the nail on his head that it's just going to make it harder to gain devils as a jungler, and it's going to be harder to be a jungler in general. Yeah, I mean the the, the issue I have is that. Right, are listening to the people, which is a bad move. <laughs> people are dumb because everyone in this game wants it to be one v one, and they complain when it's not. Um, mm -hmm. Or let's say everyone, most people, uh, they, and people will complain when the game. They want to do this in ADCs all the time. Uh, complain about support. Most people There's... play as ones, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, supports will complain about ADs, and ADs will complain about supports. And you can see people say like, ah, you know, J Jana and Lulu, they're so OP. They just stand back, they shield the ADC, they nullify my trades. Uh, this guy's getting carried, there's no counterplay. Oh, then you see like Alistair. Oh, this guy, he just walks up, he full combos me, I get CC to death. Uh, he basically does enough damage to solo me. <laughs> this ADC is just standing back farming, he's getting carried, there's no counterplay. Or mage supports, they walk up, they use their spells, they won't be to the lane. The ADC sits back and farms, he's getting carried, no counterplay. And people will always, they feel that about everything that stops the game being 1v1. And I see it. Absolutely every game you play jungle, it's like, hey, that guy's walked on the ward. He's, hey, he's, 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 he's two inches from you, like, you, the Camille's, oh, you're dead. And it's like, ah, jungle difference. And I was like, ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Let your bitterness consume you. Yeah. So I just feel like this is one of those things where people complain that jungle is having too much power. And actually, I think jungle is in one of the better spots it's been in uh, right now. I think jungle power, outside of Zin Camille level two uh, taking over the map, jungle power is pretty decent. And so this feels like this is just enough because too many people complained. And that feels like what most jungle nerfs are. Outside of a few cringe cases where jungle has been uh, a giga OP. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times that we get nerfs like this, it's just because people complain about jungle. And then Riot goes, oh, well, you know, 80% of the player base thinks that this is a broken role. So well, I guess we've got to get rid of it. Traditional... I feel the same about mid laners. Like, <laughs> mid -laners the traditional broken. wisdom is that uh, your audience are good at identifying problems, but not solutions. Yeah, so, they're not like, good at identifying the problem on the minimap when it's coming towards their lane <laughs> with 100 move speed. But you know, <laughs> but yeah, no, I see, I see what you mean. Like people yeah. know how to complain, they know how to fix it. It's just, yeah, if they did, yeah. they'd be game designers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a real problem. I, guess. Right. I do think that there's some important chromas coming out this patch. No, actually, no I don't. No, we're are. not talking about skins or chromas. If you start to talk about skins Bar or chromas, Johnny, I'm gonna end this too. Oh, Warren, all right, guys. All right, guys. So cool. Thank you for watching this past <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> you can find uh, Peter's social medias in uh, this description below. Uh, I'll probably be a nice guy and put Harry's there as well. Uh, thank you. So oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> no, of course I'll put them there. So you can find those two guys there, uh, and you can follow them to see more about what they're doing. Uh, Harry, best of luck. Best of luck in your placements. Everyone, <laughs> uh, don't feed.